Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. A 52-year-old man, known case of CLD, came to the ER with complaints of hematemesis. On initial 10-second assessment, airway was patent, patient was speaking in full sentences, uh, breathing, respiratory rate of 26 per minute with a saturation of 96% room air, circulation, BP of 100 by 70 with a heart rate of 100 per minute, uh, capillary refill time less than 2 seconds. At this point, two large bore IV uh, cannulas were uh, put. Uh, disability, GCS was E4, V5, M6 and uh, pupils were bilaterally equally reactive. Exposure wise, temperature was 99 degree Fahrenheit with a GRVS of 127 milligram per deciliter. Uh, coming to adjuncts to primary survey, total counts, uh, we got a uh, CBC CRP point of care and a VBG done. Uh, point of care uh, CBC CRP shows a total count of 4.6 thousand with a hemoglobin of 10, platelet of 46 thousand and a CRP of 52. Uh, VBG showing pH of 7.47 with PCO2 of 24.8, PO2 of 18.6, potassium of 3.8, uh, lactate of 2.3, creat of 1 uh, and bicarb of 18.6. Uh, at uh, this time, we had also asked for arrangement of blood products mm. uh, and we had kept the patient nil per orally. Oh. Uh, you have given proper position. Uh. Okay, okay. So, uh, we are discussing a case of uh, decompensated liver disease uh, with upper GI bleed, right? Right. Uh, what do you mean by upper GI bleed? Uh, sir, upper GI uh, bleed basically means any bleeding that occurs above the ligament of treats. Okay. Uh, so, so, it can uh, present as either uh, have vomiting of blood, that is mm. hematemesis, mm. or it could also present as uh, mm. blackish uh, tarry stools. Okay. Say, so, why did you say the patient uh, had hematemesis mm. and uh, not hemoptysis? Uh, sir, uh, hemoptysis. How will you differentiate based on history? Sir, hemoptysis basically uh, will be seen in patients who are having a history of cough hmm. because that will be uh, blood and sputum. Okay, uh, okay, okay. But hematemesis will be blood vomiting. So, yes. uh, if a patient is already known case of CLD, hmm. uh, there is higher propensity of the patient hmm. to develop uh, hematemesis. Okay. So, so uh, what will be the appearance of a patient with chronic liver disease on general physical examination? What all things will you look for? Sir, uh, patient uh, will be ha patient will be having usually patient will have pallor, mm. uh, skin will be uh, muddy color, then uh, a distension of abdomen will be there, edema mm. will be there, then patient will be having parotid uh, enlargement, uh, yeah. parotid gland enlargement will be there, gynecomastia can be there, loss of loss of uh, axillary, uh, axillary hair, hair as well as uh, mm. testicular atrophy can be there. What is spider navy? Spider navy. Uh, spider navy is actually uh, dilated uh, arterioles. Uh, 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 dilated uh, arterioles which are seen usually over the uh, trunk uh, and trunk area yes. and abdomen. Yes. Uh, uh, which actually, uh, uh, what is by flapping tremor astrexis. So flapping tremor is uh, basically we ask the patient to mm. extend both hands. Okay. Then uh, at the wrist joint we uh, push the hand backwards and mm. check the patient and ask the patient to maintain the posture for some uh, yes. for 15 to 20 seconds. Yes. yes if okay. he is able to maintain, then mm. patient is not having any flaps. Mm. That means patient is not in encephalopathy as okay. of now. Okay. So for that we check. So um, upper G blade broadly, how will you class upper G blade? Sir, upper GI bleed uh, can be classified as uh, varicel or non varicel. Uh, what are the causes of common causes of uh, non varicel bleed? So, co uh, most common cause of non varicel bleed is peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Uh, so. Then it could also be due to any erosive gastropathy. Esophageal erosion. Es esophageal erosions could be there. It could be due to Mallory Weiss syndrome. What is Mallory Weiss? So, Mallory Weiss uh, syndrome is basically mm. retching. And multiple times, if a person vomits, mm. uh, on the third or fourth time, mm. patient might uh, vomit out blood. Okay. That could be due to any longitudinal tear in the mm. mucosa mm. due to uh, mm. forceful uh, mm. vomit. So, uh, uh, how will you differentiate whether it is Mallory Weiss or uh, uh, hematemesis due to mm. like peptic uh, Sir, uh, for it to be Mallory Weiss, first of all, there has to be episodes of one or two vomiting prior mm. to it, mm. uh, forceful vomiting. Retching. Also, okay. uh, retching okay. should be there. Yes. Also, the color of the vomitus mm. in Mallory Weiss, it will be fresh red colored yes, vomitus yes. usually. Good. And also, uh, pre existing history of if patient is in DKA, patient mm. is having alcohol binge drinking yes. history, mostly it could point towards Mallory Weiss. Okay. Uh, but in uh, hematomas, uh, in this. Uh, Mm. CLD patients, if yes. we see, the blood will be mostly altered blood. Yes. Uh, it will be coffee ground in color. Because uh, of acid hematin. Due to presence of acid hematin. Oh. Okay, okay. So, uh, so uh, mm. how will you Continue. treat the yeah. patient further? Uh, so, uh, sir, coming to sample history. Yes. Uh, sir, a uh, 52-year-old male, a known mm. case of CLD with portal hypertension, mm. hyperten uh, hypertension, diabetes, mm. came to the ER with complaints of three episodes of hematemesis mm. since last three hours. Okay. Uh, it was uh, coffee ground color vomitus. Mm. Uh, quantity was around 500 ml. Mm. 
patient uh, did not have any history of melina hmm. fever abdominal pain constipation or decrease uh, hmm. in urine output at that hmm. moment so, uh, in in a case of uh, upper g blade how, how how long will it takes for a melina to cut, like manifest how long it will take sir so usually it will be if the bleeding has started and then around 4 to 6 hours patient will have manifestation either he will start vomiting or he will have and a minimum of 15 ml blood is needed and to manifest melina yes. okay okay Uh, so a uh, patient also had complaints of increased abdominal distension since two days mm. uh, and increased daytime sleepiness mm. uh, she had prior episodes of hematemesis and melina before mm. also okay. uh, no uh, okay uh, uh, coming to allergic history she is not allergic to any known medications mm. uh, and uh, our regular medications are metformin and telmisartan mm. the last meal was taken 5 uh, hours back okay okay so okay uh, any other anything uh, specific uh, no, so then uh, uh. we come to examination okay okay yeah. on examination sir on uh, general examination pallor was there mm. uh, clubbing sinuses uh, mm. lymphadenopathy was not there bilateral pedal edema was there okay 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 uh, how will you examine pedal edema uh, sir we have to uh, press on the medial malleoli mm. on both uh, mm. legs and have to press uh, keep for pressing for 15 to 20 seconds uh. and on uh, removing the finger mm. if there is a pitting yes. that we can feel mm. then okay patient so patient had pallor right yeah. so uh, what is the indication for a transfusion of blood mm. in this case so nowadays we actually follow uh, the restrictive policy for blood transfusion uh, in ugi bleed okay. uh, earlier due to uh, used to be liberal but mm. now uh, it is uh, basically we transfuse we uh, keep a lower threshold mm. usually we transfuse uh, at around 7 mg per dl yes, yes. if the blood for uh, the hemoglobin falls below that okay. and on the other hand if patient is having other comorbidities then we can consider a threshold of around 9 mm. 9 mg in the case of uh, coronary artery disease uh, okay 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 um, uh, if the patient is having coagulopathy um how will you uh, deal with the coagulopathy uh, sir uh, you usually cld patients will be having uh, altered uh, liver uh, mm. function tests mm. so in case of if inr is raised uh, mm. more than uh, 2.5 okay. you usually start the patient on vitamin k injections mm. uh, so along with uh, fresh uh, ffp transfusion FFP. yes okay okay yeah. okay so here he, this patient had massive hematemesis uh, uh, in airway uh, what will you specifically look for Uh, when will you intubate a patient with uh, yeah. uh, massive hematomas uh, so patient if uh, any patient coming with massive hematomas usually we uh, we should intubate when the patient's gcs is around 13 or starts falling below that okay. we should not wait for it to fall uh, further below mm. because as it is it is uh, since if the patient is having low gcs mm. there is high chance for aspiration, aspiration desaturation yes. and uh, especially in chronic alcoholic patient mm. with alcohol withdrawal it will be very difficult to do bronchos uh, like mm. uh, scopy mm. endoscopy yeah. so to facilitate endoscopy, endoscopy also it is better to do yeah. early intubation okay uh, what are the drugs will you use for intubation so usually uh, we can use uh, usually cld patients have a baseline mm. bp of around 100 mm. by 70 mm. usually mm. so uh, in that case we can go ahead with ketamine mm. uh, dose will be 1 to 2 mg per kg mm. uh, iv start mm. uh, and uh, with that we can also use rocuronium mm. okay so, uh, as a paralyzing agent paralyzing agent mm. okay so while intubating uh, there is a high chance for uh, patient to have uh, um, aspiration so aspiration. suction everything suction, should be uh, okay and how will you manage the patient further how will you manage medical management of upper g bleed what all the okay. drugs you will give yes sir so uh, in case of uh, variceal bleed mm. we uh, start the patient on high dose uh, pant uh, ppi in uh, proton Pandor. pump inhibitors yes, uh, high yes. dose proton pump inhibitors we initially start the patient on because mm. uh, basically uh, the clot to be formed mm. usually needs a ph of around uh, uh, more than 6 ph yes, to yes, be there yes. so uh, proton pump inhibitor will stop the acid secretion mm. so the ph will be near neutral around mm. 7 yep. so the clot adherence will be there yes. uh, clot will not be dislodged mm. then uh, next we also since very still bleed we also start the patient on octreotide which okay. is a somat- uh, somatostatin analog mm. that uh, is actually acts by directly mm. inhibiting uh, this mm. Uh, mm. uh, I, first mechanism is it will cause planchnic vasoconstriction. Yes. So blood supply to the gastro gastric mm. mucosa will reduce. Yes. So as a whole, bleeding will reduce, mm. and then also it suppresses acid production. Also, oh, yes. very good, very good. So uh, in our setup, uh, whether we are uh, we are more using octreotide rather than uh, teleprostin. What are the differences between octreotide and teleprostin? Mm. Sir, uh, 
octreotide is basically an infusion. Mm. Oh, sorry, How will you give a dose of octreotide? Sir, octreotide is given as 100 microgram mm. stat, followed okay. by uh, 25 to 50 microgram per kg uh, per hour. Okay. Uh, infusion dose. Yes, yes. And then uh, terlipresin, sir, uh, usually terlipresin uh, dose is 2 gram IV, yes. 2 milligram IV yes. every 4 to 6 hours. Okay. Uh, and it is to be continued till the bleeding mm. stops or mm. up to 48 hours, which is whichever is earlier. Mm. And we can change the dose later mm. to 1 gram IV mm. per uh, every 4 hours. Mm. Uh, before uh, starting teliprasin, will you look anything? Yeah, you will you monitor anything? Uh, so, uh, basically, teliprasin and uh, octreotide, uh, the major difference is uh, teliprasin is costlier than octreotide. So, mm. basically, we tend to give octreotide. Mm. And on the other hand, teliprasin basically causes prad, uh, this arrhythmias. Yes, so bradyarrhythmias it, it can cause. Arrhythmias it so can baseline cause. ECG. Baseline ECG is yes, no, uh, yes. Is, we should always have a baseline ECG before giving teleprasin. Also, uh, mm. CAD patients. Yes, uh, peripheral artery for, diseases. CAD uh, patients. Peripheral vascular disease patients because it causes mm. severe vasoconstriction. So okay. any. Uh, and gangrene can occur, okay. then hypertension, it increases pressure. Okay. So, we have to keep in mind before giving the depressions. Okay. And uh, um, if the if a CLD patient comes to you with history of fever and the own examination of the abdomen, the patient is having tenderness. Yes, so, what will you suspect? The first thing mm. we will suspect is a spontaneous bacterial, bacterial peritonitis. peritonitis. Oh, okay. Uh, so, how do you treat SBP? Uh, sir, uh, the treatment of SBP, basically, we have to... Uh, 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 keep start the patient on antibiotics. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Which we, antibiotic will you give? Uh, third generation cephalosporins. Okay, okay. Yeah. In the case of upper GI bleed, also will you give antibiotics? Yes, sir. Because ah. uh, uh, in uh, this thing, uh, you upper GI bleed basically. There are mucosal be, uh, erosion, erosion, will erosion will be there. there. So translocation of uh, anti sorry bacteria will be there from the gut to mm. the peritoneal cavity. So the okay. patient will be more chance to uh, have uh, SB, mm. spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Okay. So we have to start the patient either on third generation cephalosporins. Mm. That is, we can give ciprofloxacin 400, or we can mm. give ceftriaxone one gram. Okay, okay. Okay. Most common organism causing uh, uh, E. coli. E. coli. Okay, okay. Okay. Can't okay. So uh, then uh, general examination done. So then coming to systemic examination, uh, GIT, mm. uh, abdomen was uh, distended mm. with the soft non-tender bowel sounds were there and splenomegaly on palpation spleen could be uh, mm. palpated. Then uh, respiratory system, bilateral at air entry was there with no normal vesicular breath sounds mm. and uh, CVS and CNS with, with, within normal limits. Mm. Uh, flaps were absent in this patient. Mm. So um, uh, can you, hepatic encephalopathy, what is, you know, the any grading regarding yes, hepatic? Huh? So hepatic encephalopathy can be divided in four grades. Eh? Mm. The first one uh, states that there will be altered uh, sleep mm. cycle in the patient. What is in the importance of altered si sleep cycle in well, a patient is, with CLD? Uh, that is, patient will be sleeping more in the daytime uh, and less in the is, night. So yes. it is gray, hepatic uh, encephalopathy grade, grade one. one. This is one of the most earliest, earliest signs sign of out. hepatic encephalopathy. Yes. Uh. Then uh, secondly, uh, asterixis, the mm. patient will be having flaps and it is hepatic encephalopathy grade two. Mm. Then third Third grade will be stupor. Patient yes. will be drowsy but mm. arousal. And okay. fourth is coma. Patient will not be uh, okay. arousal. Okay. Okay. How will you treat uh, hepatic encephalopathy? Anything else you will have? Uh, sir, hepatic encephalopathy basically. Uh, anti coma measures. Uh, anti, oh. uh, anti coma measures we have to give. Basically, uh, all uh, CLD patients are supposed to pass two to three episodes of loose stools per day. Mm. Uh, the cause being, uh, uh, the thing is. Um, gut uh, and uh, neurotoxins are there that is basically ammonia mm -hmm. so ammonia if it crosses the blood blood, blood uh, brain blood barrier mm -hmm. it will cause encephalopathy okay. so we have to give lactulose to the patient mm -hmm. so that uh, the stool uh, mm -hmm. is washed out mm -hmm. and catharsis happens and so the ammonia cannot cross yes, the blood good, brain good. barrier here uh, the patient had upper g bleed right yes. and um, you have managed medical management was started you have started on patient ppis mm -hmm. Octotide infusion, you are arranged blood, the blood yes. products, FFPs, yes. uh, everything was given, mm. and endoscopy was done, banding was done, right? Yes. So uh, this, even after the endoscopy, after, um, next day if the patient is having a drop in HB mm. Mm. Uh, and hypotension, mm. what do you suspect? So there is persistent bleed. bleed. Uh, so how will you manage then? So we have to go for relook OGD scope yes, first of yes, all. Yes, yes, yes. What is tips? Tips is sir, uh, trans hepatic intra, intra uh, uh, trans. Intrahepatic intra uh, portosystemic shunt. Okay. Basically, we are shunting so um, hepatic vein portal. Vein. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, so, after the uh, uh, examination part, uh, we checked the IVC uh, to assess the fluid status of the patient. Mm. Uh, we started the patient uh, on uh, IV fluids, mm. that is, uh, till the blood products were arranged. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, we, uh, then uh, we uh, informed the GI medicine team by this time okay. and the patient was actually taken up for uh, endoscopy okay. uh, because she was bleeding at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, hemoglobin mm -hmm. at that point was 10 only but okay. uh, uh, mm -hmm. we monitored her for further hemoglobin drop. Mm -hmm. So uh, endoscopy was done mm -hmm. and endoscopy 
uh, showed a severe portal hypertensive gastropathy mm. with ooze was noted okay. and so which uh, they were uh, applied band as well as they gave adrenaline injection okay okay and uh, following wow. uh, how will you manage a um, just uh, how to manage a patient with uh, um, you will do evl for uh, esophageal viruses like for in case of uh, gastric viruses, what will you do? So we'll go for uh, in uh, glue injection. Sclerotherapy. Sclerotherapy. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, in this patient, uh, respiratory system examination was within normal limits. Oh, yes. Sir. This okay. So what normal. will you suspect in a patient of CLD in uh, respiratory system? Other system, mm -hmm. how will it, it will be affected? Yes, um, in RS, what will you suspect? Uh, sir, uh, basically, patient might be having a right side of hydrothorax. Yeah. Uh, usually, pleural effusion can uh, be there. Yes. yes. That's mostly mm -hmm. common in the right side. Yeah, okay. Good. And, uh, so pericardial effusion can also be there. Yes, yes. Also be in a state of hypoaluminemia. Mm. So accumulation can mm -hmm. happen. What all drugs to be avoided in a patient with CLD? CLD. All uh, sedatives, NSAIDs and sedatives uh, uh, should be. Sedatives should be avoided. Okay. Then uh, what happened to this patient? Uh, so uh, the after the monitoring was done for the patient, mm. uh, no further hemoglobin drop was there. Mm. So uh, after three days, patient was discharged. Mm. Okay. 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 Uh, um, yeah. How long we should we give antibiotics if, in uh, case of SPP? Uh, sir, antibiotics for one week we have to continue. Okay. 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 Um, anything else you wanted to add? Uh, sir, uh, for the this thing, uh, mortality, uh, mm. uh, we have a score called the child uh, PUK score, which yes. uh, actually. Um, to know the prognosis uh, of CLD, uh, CLD patients. Okay. So that score contains five parameters. Mm. One is the total bilirubin, mm. then serum albumin, mm. INR, ascites, and hepatic encephalopathy. Okay. Then uh, it has grades mm. that will be uh, A, B, C. Mm. So uh, depending on the the levels, we'll give points. Mm. So that will be zero to two. Mm. Uh, so if a patient has total point of five to six, mm. grade will be A. Mm. If seven to nine, grade B. Mm. If ten to fifteen, grade C. Mm. So uh, more the score, like mm. more. Like A, B, C, uh, more the score, worse will be the prognosis. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Good. Anything else is there? Oh, no, sir. Some other uh, scores are also there, sir. Actually, ah. uh, these scores are for to guide the uh, mm. tools. These are tools to guide the management. Okay. For risk scores, mm. like Rockall score can be uh, seen. Glasgow Blatchford scores can be seen. Okay, okay, okay. 